Hi everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Standalone Software Classification and Regulation in Europe. My name is Sarah Steck, and I'm the Legal and Regulatory Director here at GMED North America. Now today, I'll be talking to you about standalone software classification in Europe, why it's essential to ensure that your software complies with the directive, and what are the different conformity assessment routes to CE mark a standalone software. The classification of standalone software is one of the essential processes to help you define the regulatory pathway applicable to your device in order to ensure that it is compliant with the European regulation. As standalone software could be a medical device, the regulation didn't provide a clear rule on how to classify them. And also, guidance, in our case MedDevs, have been published to provide additional explanations to understand how the regulation applies to these types of devices. Now today, I'll review this guidance with you in order to help you understand and have a better understanding generally of the regulation for standalone software in Europe. Now, as I mentioned earlier, my name is Sarah Steck, and I'm the Legal and Regulatory Director here at GMED North America. Uh, the other person that you see on your screen is Frank Martin, and Frank is the founder and a senior quality and regulatory consultant for Expareg, a consulting firm that specialized in the regulation of medical devices in Europe and the U.S. Frank is also one of LNE's lead auditors for ISO 1345, ISO 9001, the Canadian Medical Device Regulation and Chemdicas, the Medical Device Directive, and the Active Medical Device Directive, and he's had this position since 2003. Previously, he worked for 14 years in the medical device industry as an engineer specialized in laser technology, covering several activities like engineering, service, support, and validation, with a specialization in software. Now, for several years, software, be it embedded or standalone software or even apps, have become more important in the medical field. Medical software is essential because of its multiple purposes in diagnostic, therapy, monitoring, and others. And so it must meet the medical device directive's essential requirements before being placed on the market. Now, like all medical devices, software must be classified to choose the route to demonstrate compliance with the directive. Because software classification rules were designed in the 1990s, they may be a little difficult to apply to the 21st century medical software. For this reason, the European Community published an interpretive guidance, or MEDEV, for software classification specifically. Understanding how your software is classified is essential for the success of your device in Europe, but also to ensure the software complies with the directive and to understand the control level of the notified body. So, during this presentation, we'll go over the following points. We'll talk about the regulation in Europe that's associated with software, definitions, classification, the applicable classification rules for software, the medical device software with non-medical software devices, conformity assessment routes for the CE marking of software, and software as a service. Now, the EU's involvement concerns mainly the regulatory framework for market access, international trade relations, and regulatory convergence. And that all aims to ensure the highest level of patient safety while promoting the innovation and the competitiveness of the sector. Now, when a directive is published at the European level, the members of the European Union have the responsibility to implement this text in the local law and to deploy provisions to ensure the control of the market. European, the European Community publishes guidances and harmonized standards to help manufacturers be compliant with the regulation. In parallel, the national competent authorities publish guidances and national standards to reinforce the regulation in their own countries. Today, the European Community counts 28 countries and that also includes three countries in the European economic area, which are Switzerland, Norway, and Iceland, where the European directives are applied. So these regulations govern about 507 million people.
So during this presentation, I just want to review some of the uh, some of the applicable regulation and also some of the applicable guidances that we'll use throughout the presentation. First, medical devices are regulated in Europe by three main directives. First, 9342 EEC concerning medical devices, 9385 EEC concerning active implantable medical devices, and 9879 EEC on IVDs. Now, all of them can deal with standalone software because software can be a medical device or an accessory in these three categories. Guidance is also available to allow a better understanding of the definitions used in the regulations or the applicability of the existing re regulations. Now, on this slide, you'll see some examples, but you know you should know that this is not an exhaustive list. So first, we have MEDEV 2.1-1. Which, are, which concerns the definition of medical devices, accessory, and manufacture. MEDEV 2.1-2 Rev2, which, it, which talks about the uh, field of the application of the Active Implantable Medical Devices Directive. And this guidance specifically gives an important information regarding the accessories of active implantable medical devices, because accessories of active implantable medical devices are considered to be active implantable medical devices. Uh, MEDEV 2.1-2.1 also talks about the Active Implantable Medical Devices Directive. And finally, MEDEV 2.1-6 talks about the qualification and classification of standalone software. Now, definitions are essential to ensure that the intended purpose of the software is consistent and in line with the applicable definition. So these definitions are the main definitions with which you're going to classify standalone software. So let's take a look at them. Now first we have the, the definition for a medical device. A medical device means any instrument, apparatus, appliance, software, material, or other article, whether used alone or in combination, including the software intended by its manufacturer to be used specifically for diagnostic and or therapeutic purposes, and necessary for its proper application, intended by the manufacturer to be used for human beings for the purpose of diagnosis, prevention, monitoring, treatment, or alleviation of disease, diagnosis, monitoring, treatment, alleviation of or compensation for an injury or handicap, investigation, replacement, or modification of the anatomy or of a physiological process, and control of conception, and which does not achieve its principal intended action in or on the human body by pharmacological, immunological, or metabolic means, but which may be assisted in its function by such means. An accessory is an article which, while not being a device, is intended specifically by its manufacturer to be used together with a device to enable it to be used in accordance with the use of the device intended by the manufacturer of the device. Now, standalone software, for the purpose of this guideline, is software that is not incorporated in a medical device at the time of its placing on the market or its making available. Now, standalone software specifically is a computer program, and that is defined as a, as a syntactic unit that conforms to the rules of a particular programming language, and that is composed of declarations and statements or instructions needed to solve a certain function, task, or problem. Now, this definition specifically comes from ISO IEC 2382-1. The classification of medical devices is a risk-based system based on the vulnerability of the human body, taking account of the potential risks associated with the devices. But before classifying a device, a standalone software needs to be evaluated to determine first if it's a medical device. To be considered a medical device, the software must be a computer program, not be incorporated into a medical device, perform actions different from storage and archiving, have an action for the patient benefit, and be compliant with the definition of a medical device 
or an accessory of medical device as outlined in the directive. Now you should know that standalone software could be a medical device, an IVD, or an active implantable medical device. Now for further guidance, you want to look at MEDEV 2.1-6, where, where you'll find a much larger and easier to read version of the flowchart that you see on this slide. As mentioned before, the classification of medical devices is a risk-based system based on the vulnerability of the human body, taking into account the potential risks associated with the device. Standalone software that meets the definition of a medical device is considered to be an active medical device. This means that rules 9, 10, 11, and 12 of Annex 9 to Directive 9342EC may apply. Clause 2.3 of the implementing rules in Annex 9 states that software which drives a medical device or influences the use of a device falls automatically into the same class as the device that it drives. Consequently, the standalone software could be class 1, 1 with a measuring function, 2A, or 2B. Rule 9 states that all active therapeutic devices intended to administer or exchange energy are in class 2A unless their characteristics are such that they may administer or exchange energy to or from the human body in a potentially hazardous way, taking account of the nature, the density, and site of application of the energy, in which case they are in class 2B. All active devices intended to control or monitor the performance of active therapeutic devices in class 2B or intended directly to influence the performance of such devices are in class 2B. So some examples of this are radiotherapy planning systems that are used to calculate the dose of ionizing radiation to be administered to a patient or for example insulin dosage planning standalone software. Rule 10 states that active devices intended for diagnosis are in class 2A if they are intended to supply energy which will be absorbed by the human body, except for devices used to illuminate the patient's body in the visible spectrum, if they are intended to image in vivo distribution of radiopharmaceuticals, like a clinical application of registration of PET datasets on CT datasets for follow-up tumor treatment, if they are intended to allow direct diagnosis or monitoring of vital physiological processes, unless they are specifically intended for monitoring of vital physiological parameters, where the nature of variations is such that it could result in immediate danger to the patient. For instance, variations in cardiac performance, respiration, activity of CNS, in which case they are in class 2B. Software for the presentation of the heart rate or other physiological parameters during routine checkups will be a class 2A, but if software is intended for the presentation of the heart rate or other physiological parameters for intensive care monitoring, the software is a class 2B. Active devices that are intended to emit ionizing radiation and intended for diagnostic and therapeutic interventional radiology, including devices which monitor or can control such devices or which directly influence their performance are in class 2B. Rule 11 states that all active devices intended to administer and or remove medicines, body liquids or other substances to or from the body are in class 2A unless this is done in a manner that is potentially hazardous taking account of the nature of the substances involved of the part of the body concerned and of the mode of application in which case they are class 2B. Standalone software that drives such medical devices or influences the use of such device, for example by a calculation, falls automatically into the same class as the device it drives, according to implementing rule 2.3. Apps on a cell phone to calculate and recommend an insulin dose before the injection is considered to be a class 2B even if this software is not directly connected with the injector. And Rule 12 states that all other active devices are in Class 1. 
Now, after the classification following the directive, the level of concern of software has to be classified following EN 62304, the harmonized standard regarding software lifecycle processes, even if the classification is different because a link could be done between these two classifications because the classification is still a risk-based system based on the vulnerability of the human body. EN 62304 considers three classes, A, B, and C, from A, without risk, to C, which is the risk of death. Class 1 could be Class A, Class 2A could be a Class B, and Class 2B could be a Class C. Now be careful because the EN 62304 classification depends on the solution implemented in the device and this approach could be used only during the initial classification and the EN 62304 has to be re-verified when the architecture for the software has been defined. Some standalone software may break down into a significant number of applications for the user where each of these applications is correlated with a module. Some of these modules have a medical purpose and some not based on their intended use. The modules that are subject to the medical device directive must comply with the requirements of the medical devices directive and must carry the CE marking. The non-medical device modules are not subject to the requirements for medical devices. Now you should note that it's the obligation of the manufacturer to identify the boundaries and the interfaces of the different modules. Even if these modules didn't follow the same design methodology, a clear validation of the boundaries and the interfaces is necessary. Examples of software that isn't considered to be a medical device, but it could work with medical device modules are, for example, a hospital information system. These aren't qualified as medical devices, but they may be used in addition to medical device modules. Another example is an information system that is intended only to store, archive, and transfer data, and these aren't qualified as medical devices. A CIS PDMS is a software-based system primarily intended for, for example, intensive care units to store and transfer patient information, and these also aren't medical devices. Standalone software qualified as an in vitro diagnostic medical device should be regulated according to Directive 9879EC. When intended for evaluating the risk of trisomy 21, for example, such software is specifically mentioned in Annex 2 List B of Directive 9879EC and shall therefore follow the conformity assessment procedure described in Article 9 of this directive. Directive 9385EC didn't define different classifications. Also, if this directive is applicable for standalone software, the route is the equivalent route to an active implantable medical device directive. If the manufacturer wants to place its software on the market as a service, and only if the software used for this service meets the definition of a medical device, as documented in this presentation. The software is covered by the regulation and the manufacturer must CE mark this product before placing it on the market as a service. The CE mark of the software has to be based on the class of the medical device and the rules discussed in the previous slides. And with that, it looks like our time is almost at an end. So thank you very much for coming and I hope that you enjoyed it and found it informative and helpful. Uh, like I mentioned, we'll stick around for another 10 minutes or so to answer questions that you may have asked. But if we don't get to your questions, please don't worry, we'll answer them in the coming weeks. Also, like I mentioned, we'll email a copy of the slides to everyone who signed up for the webinar so you have it for your reference as well. Thank you very much.